Oh yeah, we're, we're, we're gonna put everyone on four-piece snow. The healing... Mm, don't do it. Don't put Landau's choice up there. King Yuan is just god tier again for auto battle. This guy's too good. Oh yeah, this is this is for sure the easiest build to win. Hello YouTube! So today we'll be taking an in-depth look into Fushuan's top light cones and doing kind of a tier list for it. Depending on the light cone we are using, there are very specific and efficient ways of building her in my opinion. So today we'll be focusing on her builds for each light cone, compare the HP% percent versus defense percent stats with each light cone, the easiest and most efficient way to build her to survive everything while keeping her teammates alive. So TLDR, we're basically building her to auto everything. Also, take a look here. This is Memory of Chaos 10 level 90 yang ching he will help us test out these light cones you are my most trusted aid wait bro just walks out like that what you. the Jing Ching channels a big AoE attack, and when it comes down on our team, it will deal a significant amount of damage. The base damage he will do will be his 697 attack times his skill multiplier, which is 625%. So we get 4,356. This will be the base damage he will deal to each team member. And so do remember that Fu Shuan's skill will create a barrier and redirect 65% of his raw damage to her before applying any defense or damage reduction modifiers. So the damage that Fu Shuan will take if all allies are alive will be three times the damage from her allies right there's three people but only 65 percent of it and then her full portion of the attack which is the full damage so every yang ching will deal about 12,851 damage to our fu shuan before her damage reduction modifiers kick in and our goal is to build fu shuan so that when yang ching does his damage she will never get one shot even at 50 percent since remember that when she's lower than 50 percent she'll trigger her talent the emergency food Paimon is not <laughs> that will heal her to almost full. So yeah, she just needs to live any one shot at 51%, as well as providing the team utility for survival. Okay, so these are the light cones we are ranking today for her. So why not? We are wildfire. Uh, yeah, because it's washed. <laughs> Get it? Fire washed. Yeah, subscribe for more. No, seriously, it, it, it's the name of the light cone. Stop it. Get some help. Okay, so here are the base assumptions. These are her traces, right? Talent and skill. They're at level 9. Going to go with a general build of HP% percent body, ER rope, speed boots, sphere is currently empty to see if we should run defense or HP. We'll be putting her on the two-piece longevous, two-piece withering snow, and the two-piece ageless. So we'll find the recommended build needed for each light cone and how many substats rolls you'll need to be close enough to survive a one shot, whether it's better to run defense percent or HP percent substat, and also account for how the light cone will provide utility for the teams, its pros, cons, and yeah, etc. So Landau's choice. This is unironically one of the best options in my opinion. And these are the assumed stats I will be using. I will have them on screen, so feel free to pause. And these are her total stats without the sphere main stat. So now let's do the calculation and visualize it with data. So we know that Yang Qing will deal a base damage of 12,850. Now let's apply the defense and damage reduction modifiers to see the true damage that Fu Shuan will take with the above stats. This is the formula we will be using to do that. The ones we are concerned about is the base damage, the defense damage multiplier, and the universal damage reduction multiplier. This is basically calculating Yang Qing's true damage. So using the defense multiplier formula, we can convert the defense into the desired multiplier with level 90 enemies. As for the universal damage reduction multiplier, the 17% is from her level 9 talents, the 8% is from her 2-piece no, and the 16% damage reduction from Landau's choice. So using the DPS equation, this is the true damage that Fu Shuan will take from Yang Qing massive AoE attack. We will then take our HP after her skill is applied, cut it in half minus Yang Qing's true damage, then that is the result of our remaining HP. And so we see that, yeah, we aren't living. <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculous remarks. Goodbye. But that is okay. This is before applying the main stat percent and the sub stats. So this is the graph that represents the amount of HP or defense that Fu Shuan will need in order to survive the attack. Remember, this is without us putting on the main stat sphere. The left Y axis represents the HP remaining after Yang Qing attacks. The bottom X axis represents the increase in percent defense or HP. The red line represents the HP percent needed. The blue line represents the defense percent. As we increase increase our HP percent on the x-axis, our HP remain gets closer to zero. 
and we want it to be above zero. So in this case, we are above zero when the HP percent is equal to 1.12, which is 112% HP needed in order to survive. Remember that this is before we apply the HP percent main stat sphere. So using the 43.2% HP percent sphere, our requirement goes from 112% to 68.8%. So that's now what we need inside of our substat. 68.8 divided by 3.8, that's about 18 substat rolls <laughs> into HP. Yeah, that's kind of high. I don't think so. I don't think I'm going to be doing that actually. But how about defense instead, right? Because can't we just you you know roll defense because it's more efficient as seen here from the graph defense will scale better up until a certain point so can't we do that instead and yeah we can't yeah baby that's what i've been waiting for that's what it's all about so after calculation we need 55 percent substat in defense so that's about 11 substat rolls into defense which is not bad and this is more realistic than the 18 substat rolls for hp and yeah remember that defense substats are more effective they give 4.8 percent whereas hp is 3.8 percent so here's the proof if once we plug that in we are able to survive and so we can see that yes we do have the remaining 17 hp left yay how nice how comfy <laughs> so you're wondering hey 55 percent defense couldn't we just substitute that with a defense main stat sphere and get a ton of hp percent in the substat the answer is yes you, you can definitely do that however it's a little bit less efficient because we only have five relics that we can roll hp percent on because one of them is an hp percent main stat so we'll need about 11.5 hp rolls across five relics which isn't too terrible to achieve but at the same time it's not the most efficient however you could totally do that if you want to so my recommendations for building around Landau's choice run HP percent main stat on the body and sphere the recommended stat is 6300 HP and 1600 defense if you're not using 2p snow then 6400 HP and 1800 defense yeah 2p snow is very good but remember that this is not something like, oh, you must get, right? It's more like just the ideal numbers, but you can get like 30% worse stats and still clear the content. And then as for substat, aim to get 134 speed. And then the priority for substat will be defense over HP percent. For the tier list ranking, I'm going to put it at s rank the reason why i'm putting out an s rank is with the 200 percent increased aggro value we'll be taking a lot of hits the more damage we tank the less our allies take the hits and the easier it is to sustain them um, and then also the extra hits will also help us regenerate energy consistently we don't need to rely on rng right so the light cone helps us get our ultimate fairly reliably at three turns rather than the normal four that's my take on landau's choice however you don't need to do all of the math nonsense above in order to find out if your character can survive the easiest way is just use this formula here which first we take half of whatever our Fu Shuan's HP is after using her talent and then use that to determine our character's EHP which is kind of like how much HP we can tank until we hit zero so let's plug my Fu Shuan in and see if she'll survive the one shot so my Fu Shuan 6950 HP 1459 defense running S1 day one two piece no and so when we plug it in we get 12147.76 six effective hp that means that, that that's how much we can tank at half hp and so at half hp we subtract that by yang ching's base damage which is his original damage which is 12850 so you see that my fushuan isn't going to survive his one shot at 50 percent hp i'm in danger However, I was still able to clear Memory of Chaos 10 doing the auto battle with her. Like I mentioned, you don't need the number. This is just like the ideal number to get in order to survive anything, especially during auto battles or something like that. As for her signature LC, these are her total stats without the sphere. Feel free to pause. And now let's take a look at the results. So I won't bog you guys down with the math and you guys probably understand the gist of it now. So with the calculations, we see that Fu Shuan with her signature light cone will need approximately 99% HP in order to survive and then after applying the HP percent orb we will need about 55.8 percent so that's from our substat just like Landau's choice we can substitute that with defense so instead of 14.6 HP percent substat rolls that we need which is quite a lot we can then convert that to defense and so for defense we will only need approximately 40 percent defense which is a lot better and so that's about 8.3 substat rolls into defense so rather than having to roll 14.8% HP substat. So the recommended stats at level 9 to 10 traces, the ideal stat is 8,000 HP and 1450 defense and 8,000 HP and 1675 defense without 2 piece no.
you'll typically want to stack as much HP as you can. For her signature light cone, it doesn't have any aggro value on her, so she's not going to be taking a lot of hits. So therefore, uh, you could just optimize to run more HP to help your to heal your team rather than running defense, um, so that you can actually just provide that utility. This light cone will also help us get our ultimate up fairly quickly for about three turns because of the extra ER that it provides. It also provides us 9% damage to all our teammates. So yeah, overall, this light cone is 100% her best light cone. For the substats, we want to aim to get 134 speed like usual and prioritize defense. And then after about 1500 defense, prioritize HP percent. Overall, for the ranking, obvious, easy as it can be, S+. Plus. As for day one in my life, these are the following stats we are going to be working with. And yeah, so as we can see, after calculations, the HP remain is 1,500, right? Or basically negative 1,500. It's, it's a little bit worse, right? In terms of providing survivability for Fu Shuan. So now let's visualize the defense versus HP percent requirement. So in using a 43.2% HP percent orb, we can see that we will need 118% HP, which is more than the rest of the other light cones we've gone through so far. And then after using HP sphere, we will need a combined total of 74.8% HP, and that's about 19.7 subs that rolls into HP. 20, that's essentially 20 subs that rolls into HP, which is it's gonna be like, uh, you know, you need perfect pieces on everything. So instead, we can substitute that with a bit of defense as well, right? So if we convert it to the defense needed for the substats, it will be around 64% defense. And that gives us about 1,924 total defense that she needs. That is about 13.3 substat rolls into defense. Not as bad as before. So you're probably wondering, hey, the gap is kind of big for defense, right? Should, should we start using a defense main stat? So my recommendation is to not do that. Um, I wouldn't do so, you can, but because the light cone doesn't take aggro from our teammates, our teammates are actually going to get hurt a lot, even with the 8% damage reduction that she provides to her teammates from the light cone. So you'll probably want the extra HP to heal up your teammates a bit, even though it's barely like 50 HP per ultimate. How do I know this? Well, I personally tested this light cone and my allies were getting railed by Yang Ching left and right by his swords, especially, right? They were just slapping them. And uh, as you can see, here uh, silver wolf and pella keeps getting aggro and then silver wolves just end up being really low and then uh yeah she gets one shot let me give you guys a little bit of comparison so you guys can see the full picture here so versus a landau's choice we see that landau's choice provides 200 aggro value less damage taken from teammates and faster ultimates three turn versus four turns due to the fact that uh you know you're taking more damage from the enemy you're probably gonna get the three turn ultimate day one in my life only has an eight percent damage reduction to everyone so that's the Trade off. So the ideal stats would be 7200 HP, 1500 defense, and then 7200 HP and 1700 defense without the two piece. No, it's still a solid option. I'm able to completely clear it in Memory of Chaos 10 after a few attempts, but in my opinion, Landau's choice will be the optimal one. So in this case, for the tier list, I will be putting day one at A tier. So right below Landau's choice. Oh, and my recommended build run HP percent main stats on both, and then the typical speed and ER ropes. And then for substat, aim to get the normal speed and then prioritize defense and then HP percent. So for moment of victory, these are the stats on the screen. Feel free to pause. So after calculations, we see that moment of victory has a very solid start. It's the best one so far in terms of survivability just by itself. So now let's visualize the defense versus HP percent requirement. So we see that we are going to need 68% HP. And then after we apply the 43.2% HP sphere, we do get a remaining 24.8% that we need. And that's about 6.5 substat rolls. That's a lot better than the, the other light cone so far. A lot more comfy. Man, this light cone is really good. And it's basically the better version of Landau's choice. So if we were to convert that to defense substats, we can see that we will need about 24% uh, defense, which is about five substat rolls into defense. So yeah, it's, it's not that much of a difference between HP and defense. So that's really 
really nice for us. So my recommendation for Moment of Victory, it's basically a way better version of Landau's Choice, right? It has the 200% aggro value attached to it. So your teammates will take less damage and you will be the one receiving the hits, meaning that your ultimate will be a three turn ultimate, most likely rather than a four turn ultimate. And so the stats needed for the Light Cone, it's 6600 HP, 2k defense, and without two piece, no, 7200 HP and 2k defense. We see that this is such a good Light Cone in terms of self survivability and helping your teammate. So my recommendations and build around the signature Light Cone, you'll want to run HP percent main stat, your, your normal HP body, HP fear, and then speed boots and an ER rope. And then as for sub stats, try to get the necessary speed. You want to prioritize HP percent over defense percent as seen from the graph, right? You see here, and we see that HP will eventually outgap defense fairly quickly. So you want to start building HP. So I would put this next to Sasha and put this at S plus tier as well. I would use it. I would use it if I had one. And finally, texture of memory. These are the stats that we are testing it with. And yeah, let's take a look at the calculation and visualize the uh, difference between HP and defense right here. So we see that this light cone is actually one of the best light cones for self sustain, right? It is basically it's going to help us really survive. And so as we can see here with the shield calculated in, we only need 37% HP in order to survive. This is huge because that's basically the main stat that we need. So if we add in the main stat sphere, we can see right away that we don't even need sub stats. However, the, the issue is that this light cone, it could be RNG sometimes. Sometimes your shield might drop and then the enemy slaps you with their big damage hit, right? It's a little bit risky. However, most of the time you will be able to get your shield up and that sh should totally be a okay so in this case we need zero substats and i would highly recommend just stacking hp in this case due to the fact that you don't need anything to live you don't need any more defense you, your shield is enough to carry you through the whole thing however your teammates aren't going to be very happy they're going to be taking hits left and right just like the other light cones like day one and so we see that it's very important that you build as much hp as you can to provide your teammates that utility due to the fact that this light cone has no innate utility that you can help your teammates with so your teammates are going to be the one that's going to be worried about dying right so my recommendation for building around this light cone yeah that's pretty much it that was the recommendation so yeah just stack as much hp as you can this light cone costs four turn ultimate because there's no aggression on on you right so you're not going to get that really consistent energy from taking enemies hits and it provides no utility for teammates so you just have to hope that you get lucky on hp substats Okay, so for Texture of Memories ranking, I'm going to put it right behind Landau's Choice. I think it's worse than Landau's Choice, but better than Day 1. Uh, maybe I'll do this. I think this might be a little bit more accurate. The reason why Texture of Memory is at A and Landau's Choice is at S is because Landau's Choice takes the aggro from your teammates, so your teammates essentially take less damage. However, you do need to build a little bit more sustain in order to live. And yeah, with the increased aggro, you're going to get a 3-turn ultimate. So this gives you a 3-turn ultimate moment of victory. Victory gives you a three turn and Sasha gives you a three turn. Texture of memory does not provide your allies any other benefits. However, day one of my life, I would say it's kind of like A minus B plus type of light cone. So you're probably wondering, hey, day one of my life, you're underestimating it. It's really good. I have that light cone. I did clear memory of chaos with it. However, it did take a few tries because statistically it is the worst in terms of survival. So it's harder to build. And also it doesn't have any aggression or energy value. So it's inherently going to take a bounce a four turn ultimate in order for it to come back up. Cones are really good light cones for being sub DPS because Landau's choice, if you're taking more aggression, you're going to build up more energy. More energy means more ultimate. More ultimate means more damage. Same thing with Landau's choice and same thing with Sasha. The Sasha already has a lot more damage. You don't need the aggression in order to build energy. It already has the energy built in. So overall, these three light cones do have a big gap over everything else. Anyways, yeah, that's the current tier list right now. So now we're going to talk a little bit about how we can build her team members in order to survive and not have to worry about you know hey my light cone is not too good or why is my fushuan so weak for my main account i focus around autoplay so that's the goal here to build an autoplay team that is really efficient and effective so there's really kind of three ways to solve the problem of your Fushuan is quote unquote too weak. So first off, right, Fushuan is a semi healer. She's not a full on healer. She can't sustain for an infinite amount of time unless you have her light cone and like God tier stat. 
So yeah, the first way of solving this issue is, of course, just running a healer. There's nothing wrong with it. Don't get wrapped into the concept of, oh, I must run her as a solo sustain. However, if you have enough damage, then you don't need to. For example, maybe my Ting Yun and my Ting Yuan is dying too often, but they have enough damage. Then I'm going to sacrifice another support or another DPS in order to make sure that my team survives. The second option is having a lot of damage, meaning that, hey, you're running something like Don Hang with Bron and stuff like that. However, this is a very premium team, right? It's very expensive. It's not very cheap to build. And so, yeah, that's that's kind of the other option. It's just, hey, kill them before they kill you. So yeah, the third and final way is to run your supports with a lot of defensive options. So yeah, as seen here, my Ting Yun has 3,200 HP and almost 1,100 defense. So she's very tanky, even at level 65, right? And only at level 60 light cone. I could go even further beyond. However, all I really need are just really good defensive relics or just like a main stat defense relic and then a main stat HP relic and then I'm good to go. I can still run ER rope, speed, and same thing with Silver Wolf. So we take a look at Silver Wolf, we see that she's also pretty tanky. 3,300 HP and 1,500 defense. And so we see that her relics were also running for Peace Withering Snow. You don't need to run for Peace Withering Snow. However, it's really good for that extra heal that every time you're below 50% and you're taking your turn, you're going to be very healthy combine that with fushuan's ultimate you're pretty much good to go so yeah this is essentially what i did in order to just auto battle and clear the content easily right this is just put some defensive relics and four piece wooding snow on my characters and boom bop bam easy clap i don't even need to play the game and i've already cleared it Fushuan with her day one in my life light cone not her best choice in my opinion as you guys probably already seen but that's fine you know her relics pretty standard Pretty basic stuff, and Eidolon is at zero. And then we have Blade. Basically, defense, right? All defense, and then we're running four piece no. Yes, four piece no on everybody. And then Blade can heal himself, so he doesn't really need that. But everyone else is running four piece snow. Uh, just a little bit more healing if they're like below 50%, right? That's gonna help out a lot. Oh, the big ulti? Oh, let's see if we live. Are we gonna live? Are the homies going to live? Yes, easily. No problem. Man, Pella needs to stop using her skill. Um, we need a support. I, I, I like that's why I like Ting Yun a lot better for autoplay. She uses her skill and then she just auto auto and then skill again and then it's just like skill point positive. Pella, on the other hand, every time there's a damn skill point up, she just she's just like, hey, for me? Oh, we're almost dead here. Ooh, Wuthering Snow kicking in. That's that's the Wuthering Snow. And then the ultimate, ooh. Who says we need her light cone to sustain? We don't, we don't. Man, Landau's choice. Look, look at that. He's keep, he keeps hitting Pella, dude. Landau's choice or moment of victory, I think, is just too good. It's just too good. Imagine getting Fushuan getting hit and then basically regenerating and then your teammate don't get hit so then they don't take like insane amount of damage but it's okay i think we're gonna clear it stop Lola, please we just hit Pella, and now he's she's at one shot there you go he's channeling his ultimate ah uh, beautiful so yeah, if you guys did enjoy, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Ah, oh, that was, dude, this team is so good. I love that team. I also love this.